Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nantan Senemad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this type of content, please consider subscribing. If you do data science, you know that Pandas is an indispensable library that will allow you to do data wrangling, whereby you can read in your data, you could handle missing data, you could pre-process your data. It serves as the basis at which you prepare your data before it can be used for building your machine learning models. And as powerful as it can be, using it and mastering it is a great challenge. And wouldn't it be better if you could have a way whereby you could easily use the pandas library by just clicking on it? I mean, literally by clicking on it. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use pandas by augmenting it with the ability to use a graphical user interface to easily handle the data as if you are coding the pandas data frame, but using the graphical user interface instead. And so without further ado, let's get started. And so the library that I'm going to cover today is called Bamboo Lib. Bamboo is in the food of pandas. And so Bamboo Lib allows you to intuitively use pandas as if it is a GUI point and click software. And so you can essentially use all of the functionalities of pandas by easily using your mouse to help you clicking on the options that you want. So this is the website of Bamboo Lib. And if you would like to have a look at this website, you can just Google for it. Just type in Bamboo LIB. And then it's going to be the first link. And so you can click on the try live demo. And then this will create an interactive notebook using Binder. Wait just a moment. So while we're waiting, let's have a look at the web again. So before we continue further, let me make a note that Bamboo Lib is for a fee, meaning that you have to pay to use this. And so they have four plans for you to choose from $15, $39, $58, and also custom. And so $15 is for the private use. So it's for the non-commercial user. And so this is particularly suitable if you want to use it for your private data. However, if you would like to play around with the Bamboo Lib and use it on open data and nonprofit teams, you can also use Binder and Kaggle. So let me show you how you can use Bamboo Lib on Binder. So let's head over back to this notebook. And so let's have a look. And so here is just a couple of lines. The first line of code here is import pandas as PD and then import Bamboo Lib as BAM. And actually, you could also replace this with a data set of your choice. So let me show you. Let me use the NBA player stats that we have performed web scraping in a previous video. So links in the description and also up here. Okay, so let's click on data. And click on the NBA player stats 2019. Click on raw. And then click on the URL. Copy it and let's insert a code cell here and type in exclamation mark w get and then paste the URL. Okay, load the file and then copy the name of the CSV, put it here. Let's move this down. Okay, so here we're gonna import pandas as PD and we're gonna import bamboo lib as BAM and then we're gonna use pandas to read in the CSV and assign it to the DF variable. And let's have a look at DF. And you wanna click on the show bamboo lib UI. Okay, and so here you have three options. You wanna search for the transformation that you wanna perform on the table, or you wanna create a plot, or you wanna explore the data frame. So let's start from the right, and then we'll move our way to the left. So let's explore the data frame. Okay, so notice that this might resemble pandas profiling a little bit. So this first tab will provide you a glimpse of the overview of the columns. So here you're gonna see the name of the columns, player, position, age, team, games, okay, and set to run until points column. 
and for here you're gonna see the number of unique values so you're gonna see that out of 708 rows there are 530 unique player values and so you're going to see that the player name has the most unique value followed by the MP column and the 2P percent and the EFG percent. Okay, so this will just tell you the relative uniqueness of the value of your column. And so it's also good to be able to see the relative number of the missing values at a glance here very quickly. And here we see that there's no missing value. And then these are just the examples of the first five rows just to give you an overview of what values are in the columns of the roles here. And let's click on the second tab, column. And then you could dive in into each of the columns. So let's start from the player, right? And then you're gonna see, okay, which one has the most count, right? Like we know that there are 530 unique names. And for the 530 unique names, some names are found more than one time. And so for example, Andrew Harrison is found for four times. Alec Burke is found for four times and probably they were traded to another team during the season. So if you might be interested in the trading of players from one team to the other, etc., you can have a look at this as well. Like for example, which was the most traded player. Okay, you could click on the following column, show position, or we can even hide the player here. Okay, and so you see the traditional positions are shown in the most populated here. Shooting guard, power forward, point guard, center, small forward. Okay, and you see the relative distribution out of the entire data set. Shooting guard accounted for the most at 24%, right? Followed by power forward. Okay, and you can also have a look at bivariate plots. For the center, there are 96 unique values and there are 120 rows. Top 10 value of players. So here you see all of these players are center, having the position of center. And so as you notice here, it will automatically use this command in order to give you this view. So for those of you starting out pandas, please also make note of what command are shown here. So you could just copy this and then implement it in your code as well. So you could learn along while using this interactive pandas bamboo lib library. So you could also make use of it as a learning tool. Okay, and it has this predictor function where position is predicted with one feature and it shows the relative score metric. So probably coming from the Pearson's correlation coefficient. Okay, might be interesting to have a look. So this is very nice. It allows you to play around with the data, eyeball the data. So it's good when you're starting out in your analysis and you don't know the data set yet or you want to gain an understanding of the data set. So you could just click, click, click. Because sometimes when you're starting out on the data set, you might not know which type of exploratory data analysis plot that you want to use. So in most of the cases, you might be using all possible plots and graphs. And so this tool, Bamboo Lib, comes in handy. It allows you to just interactively click and drill down through the data frame. And looking at various correlations or various plots, various columns, right? Various bivariate plots or having a look at the overview of the data set. Okay, so let's close this. This is the explore data frame. Okay, and so let's continue with the create plot. And so here you could select histogram and let's say that you want to use the x-axis to be the player name and let's add y-axis. And in the y-axis, we're going to select points and add property here. We're going to use the histogram function and we're going to show the maximum. And so this gives you a relative overview of which player scores the most points. And you could just hover the mouse over it. And then you see that, okay, it's James Harden here. So you make note that it's kind of like the bars here are spikes. And you could set like a threshold here. Like, okay, anyone exceeding 30 points. And you see only one value. And you see James Harden. And let's say that between 20 and 30. And you just move your mouse over from left to right. And see what names comes up, right? 27. 25.6 right just interactively you know just playing around eyeballing the data and let's say that you would like to create this plot you could just copy it or copy code 
right? And then it should copy the code already. And then you just paste it down here and then run the code cell. And so you get the exact same plot as shown here. So it comes in handy when you're eyeballing it and then you see a particular plot that you like. So you could just copy the code and paste it down here, right? And then you could also annotate this a bit in order to add meaning to it. Plot of max points versus player. Okay, and so with this notebook, you could also save it, right? You could save it as a PDF. You could save it as a notebook file as well. And the good thing is you can also open it up. You could upload your own data in here, right? And then perform your own custom analysis as well. Okay, so let's close the plot. And so you could play around with the different types of plots here. And so let's move on to the next one and search transformation. So here you could do various sorts of things that Pandas allows you to do, like filtering, sorting, group by aggregate data, join merge data frame, replace value, string manipulation, bin columns, pivot the data, drop missing values, or even replace missing values. Let's click on drop missing value and then drop missing values in all columns. And then the name of the new data frame, let's just maintain it at the same name, execute. And then you see that it also gives you this block of code here. So it's good for the newbie, it's good for the beginner. And so you can learn along as I have mentioned previously. And so if you want to remove missing value, then you know, okay, that it is the drop NA function, okay, if you're starting out. Okay, so this comes in very handy. And let's see, you wanna perform some other, let's see, filtering. And then you wanna select roles based on some condition. And so let's say that you wanna show players having points greater than 20. Execute, and then you're going to see only those having points greater than 20, right? And then you see the name here, and you see that there are 34 rows by 29 columns. So you see that there are 34 players having points greater than 20. Make note that this is the code that was used to filter the data, okay? And so we have done something similar in a previous video on exploratory data analysis using pandas. And so as you will see, this is very easy. You just click on it interactively. Select rows or even filter by dropping rows if you like, right? You could drop rows if the player has more than 20 points. And so you're gonna focus on players having less than 20. And so let's say that you want players having more than 20 points a game. And let's add another condition. And you want only the shooting guard. Okay, so you want players having more than 20 points and their position is equal to shooting guard and then execute, right? And so it's gonna run this block of code here. And so all of these are shooting guards. Okay, having more than 20 points. And you could also copy this particular code. And then show it here. Right, same data. Only shooting guard, more than 20 points. Okay, so the possibility are endless and you are able to utilize the full power of pandas. So this video is not sponsored. So I just found that this library is very nice and it's great for learning pandas. And if you are already using pandas, you might learn a couple of new tricks along the way as well. And aside from that, you can also perform some quick exploratory data analysis and it's very interactive and yet you could customize it to be having several steps, several filters, several transformation, etc. as if you would do it normally by coding it. Okay. And so if you find value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please help out by subscribing. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And so please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.